So, Jean, it's quite a year we're having here. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of kicked us in the head a few times. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, you, what's the negativity that's going on right now with you there? Uh, I think it's a accumulation of things, Jake. I mean, this has been an incredible year of isolation, reorganization, cancellation. I mean, 2020 is a year of cancellation. Mm. Um, so, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Got, you know, my kids are homeschooled now, both of them, whereas before I had one. Of course, a lot of the shows have been moved from certain locales to different locations. The, the, the calendar's all kind of mixed up. Um, you know, social media, everyone's living on social media. So being cooped up in the house, not able to travel. Um, you know, we did a show out in Atlanta, Georgia, which was actually the Chicago show. And that was our first webcast of the year. Um, and that was following the Cal Pro, which was in Las Vegas, following the New York Pro, which was in Tampa. Um, you know, people start to hang on to every word that you say. I, I'm not a rookie at this coming into hosting I've shows. Been 30 years. I've been doing it for 30 years. I got started back in uh, probably about 1989, 90. Lisa Wick used to have a show called American Muscle mm -hmm. and brought me on to work for ESPN. And when I did some of those shows, hosting and highlighting bodybuilding shows and personality profiles, it led into becoming a master of ceremonies for competition. So I would travel the world throughout the 90s, throughout my bodybuilding career, hosting shows, uh, commentating on shows, and uh, that, that was kind of my niche. That's what I wanted to do, kind of sports commentating. Bodybuilding right. didn't have it. I fell in love with it, and I've been doing it for 30 years now. Uh, you started so, off doing it with Joe Weider. I did. Joe Weider um, thought that I could be pretty much the voice of bodybuilding, uh, thought I was pretty articulate. I did take voice and diction, and I did take acting for the camera, and I knew those would come in handy as a, as a top bodybuilder, and it served me, served me very well on camera, doing seminars and, and dealing with people, and I kind of found my niche commentating on shows. Um, and I guess uh, some people thought I had a bad day at the office in Chicago. <laughs> So we yeah. wound up there uh, hosting the Chicago Pro Shows, our first pay-per-view in, in, in a long time. Yeah, we went into that basically. You know, we, we didn't uh, prep you guys a lot in terms of what we wanted from you and whatnot. We just kind of winged it and uh, said, let's go. Well, I mean, it's easy to criticize something that you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Number one, we don't get a script. No, no script. We get a, a, we get a name, a number, and a location of where the athletes are from. So these athletes that are trying to qualify for the Olympia are from all over the place. I believe Tim Gardner had a full lineup from 212, men's physique, women's physique, women's bodybuilding, classic, open bodybuilding. So we had all these athletes. Yeah, we, we started off with the Chicago Pro making sure that we had an entire, uh, we covered everything. Yeah, yeah. you we did. did. <laughs> so, yeah. We covered everything except bios on the athletes. So we don't know. Yeah. Isabel and I didn't have a bio on each athlete. Well, that's one of the things that's going to be changing here is um, we're, we're going to go ahead and, you know, through, uh, you know, Muscle and Fitness or any of our other, uh, you know, properties there, we're going to make sure that we have a full, you know, file of bios, at least on, you know, all the pros that we can find, you know. Yeah. And certainly for everybody that's competing, you know, at the Olympia. It seems like people are information hungry, and when you don't have that bio, like we don't know where the athlete uh, earned his status, what contest got them there, uh, how long they've been bodybuilding, are they a father of three, are they a mother of two, what business lifestyle stuff they're into, we kind of have to wing it. And no fault of wings is strength, but the Olympia doesn't provide that either. Um, I've been doing this again like 30 years, and on the amateur level in the 90s, we could get those bios because there were fewer divisions. Now we have eight divisions. There was men's bodybuilding and women's bodybuilding, and naturally the athletes could give us a bio of who they are. For decades, we have not been supplied that information. I'm not going to make any excuses. I mean, everybody has a bad day at the office. Um, kind of going off script, you get into general conversation, you get relaxed, you're looking at the monitor, and sometimes you forget of the audience that's watching, that some of the athletes on the stage have families, have kids, have mothers and fathers, trainers. Well, part, part of what I wanted out of you and Isabel there in Chicago is to have more of a, a conversational level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, type of coverage. Yeah. And you know, perhaps maybe that got too relaxed. You know? I think it did because we, we definitely felt like we were at home. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Isabel's first time at it and I got very comfortable uh, chit-chatting with her. And in the, in, in the interim- Because you both know the industry very yeah. well. And, you know, right, so. and, and it was very, it was very, we were very comfortable. And so it's easy after two days of talking about athletes that we're not familiar with, some of them, 
um, you can kind of go off script. I think maybe uh, sometimes you get a little bit too personal or maybe even too critical. I mm-hmm. Trust me, um, bodybuilding is a sport of criticism and I think uh, sometimes the athletes, they are in a place of vulnerability when you criticize their hard work um, and oh. you recognize that some of them aren't in shape or some of them are disproportionate and you bring, it magnifies it when you hear it from somebody yeah. like myself. Exactly, but you know, when, when you come into these, uh, when you're commentating, you're, you're not in the judge's chair. Yeah. You know, you know, the, you're kind of an extension of the promoter, and as a promoter, you know what our job is. You know, to make the athletes look good. Right. You know, to make fans out of the people that are watching the show. You know, we, we want to build up the sport. You know, so as your commentator, that's what we need you to do. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, the negative standpoints, no, leave those behind. You know, you have your own opinion. Your social media is a great place to, you know, bring that up, but, or perhaps sometimes on digital muscle if, if it's pertinent. Mm-hmm. But, man, that, when it comes to our shows, you know, you're there to support the athlete. Absolutely, and sometimes the the, the critique, um, when you don't have that checks and balance, someone that's been doing it as long as I have, like Isabel wasn't going to correct me. I've been oh. doing it forever. You know, Dan Solomon was very good. We had a nice little balance and a very good rapport. Me and Bob Chick have a very good rapport. Um, but you can get caught up with, okay, what is this guy missing? What is this girl lacking? And you get stuck into this pick, 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 pick in the audience, that's all they hear is the, is the negative uh, critique because it's not what the winner, or the champion has that makes them great. It's what the challengers don't have that they've got to go home and work on. So a lot of times, a lot of times I'm trying to pick apart what the athlete doesn't have so when they're done competing, they go back. I, a, a quick story, 1990. Just remember, that's the judge's job. Yeah. That is the judge's job. You're right. And, and as an analysis, sometimes we get caught up in trying to judge it. Yeah. And it's really only our opinion. But in 1994, for example, I got second place to Dorian Yates. And my, my mentor, John Brown, introduced me to bodybuilding. I came home. I was kind of excited. I got second place. I was in the hunt. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, you know, you don't train hard enough. And I was flabbergasted that he told me I didn't train hard enough. I had moved up to second place. And he knew my training style and he said I needed to train harder. So for the following years, years, it stayed in my head that my mentor, my idol, had told me I wasn't training hard enough. And I, I, it sometimes carries over when I'm looking at athletes coming up. Work on your calves, build your shoulders, you're too watery, you're too smooth, you're too fat. And it's pick, 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 pick. And some of these guys that idolize me don't want to hear the negative criticism. So. It's good to get the feedback, especially the negative feedback, because I think maybe I can build them up a little bit more by talking about their strengths and talk to them off camera about their weaknesses. Yeah. Like I said, I heard what they were saying, you know, and uh, we'll take that criticism, and we need to make sure that uh, everything is positive there. Mm-hmm. Okay? I need that from you going forward. Yeah, and I'm not above it's, criticism. Because I stick by my guys. I'm sticking by you, yeah. and uh, I'm a loyal person. Yeah, but I'm also loyal to the athletes, you know, you know, because yeah, those guys are coming to our show. They're supporting our show. They're, they're, they're the reason why we're there. They're standing on the stage. Yeah. They're giving somebody s- something to look at. Um, so obviously we have to support those guys. You know, yeah, so, and I'm aware. But, but, you know, when some people get a little, you know, when there's a little problem, yeah, I, I get it. You know, that happens. Yeah, but hey, you know, we're all here to support the sport. And, you know, this year has been you know, a hell of a tough year. And yeah, I mean, when you're locked up in the house and, uh, you know, you can't train in the gyms and you're hearing your idol or your mentor uh, tear you down after you've been working it up, I, I, I can see in hindsight how some of the criticisms could affect not only the coach, but the girlfriend and the boyfriend and the husband and the kids. So, yeah, that's duly noted. Um, yeah. You know, a little more encouragement would certainly could help. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah, plus a lot of uh, you know the promoters out there that were just not making the money this year. You know, it's, it's been a kick in the head. This really. virus has definitely been a uh, a moving target, and clearly I realize what's you're, at you're stake. Telling me. Yeah, <laughs> clearly I realize what's at stake with the uh, pay per view component. Um, mm. I've I've not. This is not my first time being challenged, and uh, I've listened to the crit- criticism. Uh, when I was competing as a bodybuilder, I was probably the most vocal athlete criticizing the judges who would ultimately have to score us and place us because I didn't like the way they were judging. I didn't like the lack of rotation of opinions. And so with social media, you get all the feedback. And I would be ignorant not to read the feedback, adhere to the feedback, and try to adjust. So like a lot of us, I'm trying to adjust. Yeah, up to a point. But yeah, like I said, we've heard the feedback. And uh, I get the part, uh, 
you know, you, you need to build the athlete up on stage. Mm -hmm. you know? I want to throw some more stuff in there about, um, you know, the whole, uh, the whole year by itself. Yeah. I mean, you know, essentially, and maybe this isn't the best way to uh, put it out there, but man, they're killing our expo. Yeah. We, we had to cut back to being a pavilion. And the pavilion is great for, you know, uh, you know providing you know, some exposure for all of our vendors, but you know, we're not gonna get ticket sales. Right. They, you, basically, we're taking this whole year and taking all the ticket sales out of it. Yeah. You know, so what it comes right down to is a lot of money's coming out of my pocket. Yeah. You know, a lot of this money, and this is my first year owning this. This is not, <laughs> it's not the ideal. I get it. Um, and the athletes, you know, when it comes to the prize money, we're not going to cut the prize money this year. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been telling me I'm out of my mind for not doing that, but we're not going to. It's going to come right out of my pocket. COVID didn't exist when you took this on, so kudos to you. It wasn't part of the plan. Yeah, kudos to you for even allowing the, the, the worldwide audience to have an opportunity to see the world's biggest show. That's a huge thank you on behalf of all the fans. Uh, number two, I appreciate your trust and your loyalty in me, knowing that I've got 30 years behind me doing what I do. And uh, I think everyone's trying to ad adapt and to adjust. But I think as a fan of bodybuilding, without the pay-per-view, we're going back to the days of the magazines. We have to wait months to find out what actually happened. And you got to go through social media to look at pictures. You putting on this pay-per-view on behalf of the athletes, I think, I think they all get the gravity of the situation because their loved ones won't be able to be there. Their fans around the world will not be able to be there. I think they all need to kind of rally around this pay-per-view, support it, um, and encourage it. But this is a huge service you're providing the world. We all know everybody. Nobody really dis nobody agrees with the judges all the time. I mean, yeah. you know, for the most part, they get yeah. it all pretty Don't straight. Don't I know it? Yeah, they get it all pretty straight, but I mean, you know. It's yeah, a sport it's of a, opinion. Oh yeah, exactly. It really is, and in my commentary, is an opinion. Um, I don't want to be the bad guy, but unfortunately I have been able to witness all the pro shows this year. I was there, so I'm not the guy sitting at home behind a computer analyzing someone else's opinion. I'm there, I was in the front row, I witnessed the athletes come on and off stage. Uh, I'm not judging the athletes, I was critiquing the athletes. and and. Sometimes in critique, it's a double-edged sword. Some guys come up to me and say, hey, thank you for, for noticing that my posing was disjointed or that my stomach was uh, not right. And other guys, they, they only want to hear the compliments. It's a delicate job that we do, and uh, I, I don't take it lightly. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can understand that. I mean, you know, we're not going to put on a critique here, mm -hmm. you know, coming up here at the, the Olympia. It's going to be commentary, going to be build-up. And that's, what's, it, that's the best part about it, Jake, is coming out of this, um, we realize we have to adjust. So it's going to be a different type of commentary, the same way it's going to be a different type of Olympia. Oh, you know, what is my job? I mean, my job really is to increase the popularity of the sport here in the long run. Right. You know, and anything we can do to, to get that done. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I'd love to see athletes out there, you know, making a ton of money doing bodybuilding. That isn't the case here today. There's some guys who are doing pretty good. But for the most part, you know, if you're a professional bodybuilder, Nah, you're not making much from it. You know? It's tough. So it's a tough. It's a I tough. Want to change industry. that. I want to change that for the men. I want to change that for the women. I want to keep adding more. I think you're doing that. I mean, you're headed in the right direction. The pay per view is a huge component. I think the idea that coming out of the uh, criticism of the Chicago Pro and it's and that comfortable situation is that you already are adjusting to getting commentators that actually participate and know, know the divisions. For example, a bikini girl commentating on bikini. Uh, you know, a, a figure girl commentating on figure, a fitness competitor. That's going to be a huge change that we haven't had in years past that didn't provide that for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's something we just feel is necessary. I mean, because so many of the divisions have realized, and they, they, they've said it to us, yeah. that uh, when there is a live stream, you know, they'll say, well, the, the, these folks didn't know anything about our division, you know, and it, right. was, it was clear. I mean, you know, some of the girls, you know, in bikini would complain, well, the only thing they say about us is, you know, nice bathing suit. Yeah. Well, that's, man, they train hard. They're part of the program. I mean, Absolutely. they're a huge part of the IFBB and everything we do. But I think that's great that you hear that. And we need, yeah. you know, to have commentary on there that represents that. Yeah, and we have plenty of qualified individuals out there that not only myself, it get, makes my job a lot easier, but gives other people the opportunity as well. Those are very good uh, options to have. The one thing a lot of people don't understand is you, t you need a skilled commentator there to keep the pace. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you can have somebody who is you know, very well versed in what's going on you know, in that division, but 
they forget about keeping the pace. In other words, you'll, you'll have dead air. Yeah, the judges tabulating yeah. scores and things yeah. like that. And you, okay, there's, there, there's dead air, there's nothing happening, and you, hey, we gotta do something. You know, that, that's what your job is, to make sure that they understand. They get, okay, ask them a question. You have somebody in here, you know, somebody helping assisting with, uh, with you know, fitness, or somebody assisting with, um, you know, figure. Yeah, yeah, well, I think what a yeah, big ask them questions. A big difference in my job is it's different when you're sitting at home on your YouTube channel mm -hmm. with your camera faced at you and you're in a quiet home environment, as opposed to being live, knowing the facts, knowing the history, knowing the stats at the Olympia. Um, you may not get that information when you're at a show as small as, as the Chicago Pro Show and also not having a biography. So I don't want to try to quantify my role in the industry because this is what I was born into. I've been doing it since I was 21 years old. I'm 55. Are there people that can do it? I'm sure there are. Are they interested? Like, I love Lee Labrada. I mean, I, very articulate, spit polished, yeah. but it's not his thing. He's not interested. There's a lot of athletes that are qualified that aren't interested, and yet you have a lot of people that sit at home with a huge social media following or a YouTube channel that think they can actually do the job. This isn't American Idol where you can just come in and try out. <laughs> I mean, the guys can, but yeah. you know, their turn will come. I mean, the years keep turning. Yeah. You know, five years from now, you never 10 know. years from, yeah. 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 You know, 20 years from now, Sean Ray's not gonna be sitting in the seat because you're gonna be the old dude. Absolutely, yeah, I mean, uh, time changes everything and COVID has definitely changed the way we're looking at the sport. It's made the fans more involved and more vocal and what I take my hat off to you is that you're listening and you're trying to adapt to the changes. So this will be a very interesting Mr. Olympia, but I think it'll be a positive one in terms of adjusting to, the, to our situation. And, you know, like I say, you know, going back to that pay-per-view, I mean, that's just, we're putting more money into the more, you know, a, a bit much bigger production value than has ever been put into anything that I'm aware of in bodybuilding. You know, it's, uh, you know, the, the expertise that we're bringing in, you know, the customer service on the back end, you know, that was part of the problem we had there in Chicago is we didn't have good customer service on the back end because guess who it was? Yeah. It was just a handful of us, you know, and we weren't really prepared for the problems. Yeah, you know, and we we knew better, but we fell into that. Yeah, now we have a whole professional staff from Vimeo that will be handling handling all of the uh, customer service on the backside. Yeah, you know, and uh, when there's a problem, hey, they know what to do. You know. Right. Well, the good thing is that, you know, you didn't have to provide that um, live stream in in Chicago, held in Atlanta. No, Part no. of the confusion for a lot of commentators when you go from one city, or one state to the next, back to back to back, is that. When you don't know the names, you don't know the background, right. you, you have to rely on what you know from the past. Um, I'm not apologetic for um, not knowing some certain names. It's very easy to get confused. I'm apologetic for being too critical on some of the athletes, and that will change coming up in the future right. because we've got the world's best athletes in the Olympia weekend, and that's really where the rubber hits the road. Yeah, everybody that walks onto that Olympia stage, Absolutely. there's somebody in the sport, Absolutely. you know. So. Yeah, Rep representing their gym, representing their family. I know what it takes to get on that Olympia stage, and they deserve that most respect. So, I appreciate the feedback. As a matter of fact, um, uh, every bodybuilder that's ever gone up there has been criti criticized or, or very um, critical of their performance, of their preparation, of their their outcome. So, I appreciate the feedback the good guys and the bad guys. I've heard it from everyone. I'm a big, I'm a pretty big target when it comes to this, but this is uh, some nice feedback that I can take to the bank and pay it forward. That's one thing I've always appreciated about you is you've always taken criticism and, you know, taken it well. You know, you might not always like it. You know, right. no, nobody really likes it, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you gotta look at the value of it and, you know, learn from it. Some of the criticism you gotta admit is just, you know, it's so much noise and you yeah. can't do anything about it. But you know, there's um, validity to it. So, mm -hmm. well, let's uh, let's talk about something a little more fun. Mm -hmm. We got some good news this year. We got uh, women's bodybuilding coming back, and uh, we're excited about that. I mean, what, what do we got? We had four previous world champions walking onto the stage. Yeah, yeah, Xeni, and you have uh, Iris Kyle, and you have you know Hella Trevino, and you have Margie Martin. You yeah, know, all of these girls can kill it on stage, and you don't know. Who's going to bring it the best? You know? And Teresa just won Chicago. She has a totally different look. We don't know what where the judges are going to pick up where they left off, mm -hmm. or go a whole 180 on that. They could. Oh yeah. It's been yeah. five years since the women's bodybuilding has changed, so the criteria could change a little bit for the Ms. Olympia. Yeah, we haven't uh, we haven't seen the way Sandy Williamson is going to judge this year. She's the first time I think she's yeah. taken over for that. 
Yeah, uh, and uh, I don't believe she's judged any shows, uh, you know, so far this year. Yeah, it should so. be very interesting. Yeah, so. uh, I remember we had the celebration of the legends, and we brought back uh, Carla Dunlap and Kiki Ioma and. Uh, Valentina Chapiga and Diana Cadu. I mean, they, they were all there, and they're all going to be trying to make it this year to at least watch and support. And uh, it should be very interesting for the world of bodybuilding. Uh, it would be nice. I hope we can get them in the in the audience. Yeah, and I, I saw that Valentina, she overcame the the cancer. She beat the cancer, yeah. so that was awesome. We had her on FemFlex Friday here, yeah. you know, a few weeks ago. So yeah. Yeah, and the FemFlex yeah. Friday show is great. I get a lot of good feedback yeah. for that. Yeah, we're enjoying doing it. So this is coming up only two weeks after the Rising Phoenix, which is an invitational show in Las Vegas. Yes, uh, you know, still, you know, we're we're building you know, the Rising Phoenix as world championship. It's got some of the very best bodybuilders in the world, great prize money, and you know, a nice car. Yeah, yeah the yeah. car. Yeah, and uh, some of the like you say, some of the best girls are are there, including yeah. Hella and so forth, and. Um, yeah, but uh, there's also some other girls that are coming in at the Olympia that I think, you know, like, yeah, Andrea Shaw. What's going to happen yeah. with Andrea? I mean, what if a she has? I mean, yeah. she, she, can, she can come in and surprise everybody. Yeah, the question is really not who's going to win, but which direction will they go with the look? There's so many different sure. looks, sure. so many different looks. It's sure. going to be very interesting to see. And I believe Linda, Linda's going to be there, Linda Murray, obviously. Yeah. She'll have her opinions on that. Yeah, she's going to be sitting right there next to you. Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. It would be a good addition because the ladies have been disenfranchised from the Olympia for five years. I remember Iris Kyle said it was like taking a baby away from its mother when they took the Olympia away from the women. Yeah, and now, yeah, now they have purpose. And it's in Iris's backyard. She's been off ever since that show. A lot of people are excited to see if she gets number 11. She's yeah. going for 11 Sandows. Yeah, well, we're going to see, you know. And, um, yeah, this boy, it's... Another, I, I, I go through my head all the time about, you know, who's, 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 who's going to win? You know, who, who are the real players out there? I mean, like, you got Monique Jones has always been oh, Monique, you know, yes. the, the horse out there that you never know what she's going to do, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, so. Well, it seems that way with all the divisions. I mean, it's, there's not a slam dunk. The, the front runner seat, obviously, for the men's Olympia is Brandon Curry because he's a champ. But now you have Phil Heath coming out with yeah. seven Sandow trophies. That's a huge yeah. thing, right, for Phil Heath to come back. A lot of expectations are on him and of course the 212 is wide open uh kamal is a great bodybuilder but now you're throwing in uh george peterson into that division of course derek lunsford has been second place for two years in a row mm -hmm. this is going to be one for the ages yeah derek lunsford there if he you know last year yeah, he just uh, as i recall his conditioning to me you know i'm, I'm no judge mm -hmm. you know, just wasn't quite there yeah, and, i faded and, a little bit yeah and if he comes in Boom. All the potential, all that's a guy again. He says all the potential, all the genetics. But his his mom works out as well. She actually competes. I saw that on his social media. She's a competitor. He's got some very good stock, and he's out there in in uh, in Florida now. He moved from Indiana to Florida to prepare for this show. So he's serious. He's a serious dude. And Logan Franklin is in the classic physique, right. just as tall as Chris Bumstead. He's going to bring a different look. Uh, he won the New York Pro, which was held in Tampa. So the classic physique is shaping up even more incredibly with Brian Ansley trying to recapture the title too. Well, I, I'm sure Brian, you know, he wants it back, you know, I, I'm sure he does. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. the, the bottom line is, I mean, it, timing is everything, right? T 2020, they call it the year of cancellation, but there's never been more buzz around the main players for the Olympia title in all the divisions than this year right here. That's what's gonna make this one really exciting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just, um, you the, I, I'm so excited about it. I can't even really talk about it very well. It's like, <laughs> it's like, boom, it's like you know, it, if we get ourselves a little down with you know, you know looking at you know some of the scheduling issues and all the other challenges, yeah, it's really easy to pick yourself back up. You just look at who's in the event. You know? Absolutely, the competitive lineup is what's really the saving grace of the Olympia weekend. Is who's actually qualified. Um, and the rivalries that you have that are already established, and then the comeback stories, Adela Garcia, um, Oksana Grishina coming out of retirement in the fitness. Every one of those divisions has a story to it, and that won't be lost on the pay-per-view. And Whitney Jones from just down the street Whitney. here, you know. Whitney, yeah. Whitney, Whitney isn't gonna let it go for free. And Missy Truscott coming off the Arnold Classic Championship in uh, Ohio back in March. I mean, she's flying high. It's gonna be a, definitely the women's fitness is not, you don't want to sleep on that. Yeah. So, yeah. I was like, yeah. But with Oksana coming back, you know, you know the reason why she came back has to be that she just came up with this great idea, you know, for a routine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, because that's what she's known for. And she wouldn't, she, she wouldn't have come back if it wasn't for you know, the great routine that she wants to do. So. Not to mention, she got hurt one month into her preparation. And with the date of the Olympia being pushed back, it gave her more time to recover. Now she's 100%. Mm -hmm. So 100% Oksana up against a Missy Truscott, a Whitney Jones, and the comeback of Adela Garcia. I mean, the fitness is, uh, is definitely going to be one that everybody's got to be looking at. Oh, yeah. And then you're going to have some of the new folks who are going to be coming up there and might, might surprise you. Oh, yeah. There's, I, we were just in, at the Chicago Pro. We saw some talent that we hadn't seen before. So the fitness is, is ripe with talent, old school and new school. Um, but again, the champion always has the advantage because they're the winners. At least that's how it was when I used to come up against the guys. Whitney Jones has two of those to her credit, and she's not slowing down. She's overcame all the obstacles. She's a gym owner. She's a mother. She's had her neck uh, in, a, in a brace. She's blew out her knee. I mean, and she's oh, yeah. still winning. Oh, yeah, you just, you know, look at her, you know, the jumps that she does. Oh, yeah. Just like, they didn't kill me. <laughs> yeah, well, the good thing is we've gotten little glimps, glimpses of these girls and guys on their social media. That's the advantage of having social media today as opposed to yesterday is you can see them along the preparation road. The one secret, the one that we haven't seen is the comeback of Phil Heath, and that's got to be the biggest surprise he's saving for uh, December. Yeah, well, you, you know, you know, Phil knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, I'm sure he's just training away and, you know, just building the wall one brick at a time. You know? Well, this is something, I mean, the athletes, as they gear up for it, and I know what that feeling is like. It's almost like Christmas, right? So when you get there and you get the relief off, how about you? I mean, this is what you wanted. This is something that you've been preparing for as well. I know you had some hiccups along the way, like everyone. But how excited are you to be running this event? Is it stressful or is it a joyous occasion? Oh, it is a joyous occasion, but uh, I'm not going to lie. This year has been plenty stressful. Mm -hmm. You know, you had all the limitations, and you know, a lot of uh, you, a lot of people saying, "Well, you can't get there from here." You know, and it doesn't matter what happens. We're going to put the show on. Mm -hmm. you know, that, it's going to go on. You know, we might have to make some adaptations. You know, and uh, you know, hopefully, everybody likes what we do. You know? Wow. Well. Yeah, that's. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that have been taken out of our our wheelhouse that we can do. Right. Yeah, you know, simply COVID is flat taking those things out. I mean, you know, can't do the, the expo the way we want it. We, you know, can't have the audience that we want. We do can't have that stuff. But you know, you know, we'll, we'll adapt. We're going to put on the best pay per view that I think bodybuilding has ever seen. You know, and and there's going to be a lot of choices. In other words, you don't just see what's on stage. You know, you'll be able to cut away. You'll be able to you'll know, see backstage interviews going on. You'll be able to cut away and see what's happening in happening in the vendors pavilion. You have know, some choices. You know, mm -hmm. so. And you haven't had those choices in years past. And in, in all my years, the backstage area was kind of off limits to the camera unless you were interviewing a winner. Mm -hmm. um, so to see the other dynamics that take place in the Olympia weekend on the pay per view, I think that's going to be gold for a lot of people that couldn't travel this year. As a matter of fact, they probably will feel even more comfortable watching at home on their big screen. We're going to be uh, pretty much just an American audience in, in there, you know. And yeah, and a lot of people have asked, are the Europeans going to be given a special certificate of travel to come in? Yes, we're doing everything we can. We're writing letters and, uh, you know, providing it to the athletes. The most of them should be able to get in. Some are going to struggle more than others. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it, that's proven to be a, one of the major difficulties. Yeah. You know, so... And of course, it all depends on you know what what port do they come in through, what what airport do they come in through. Yeah. Um, you know, some some will yeah like, come on in, you're, you're fine. Others you know you even get a guy on on a bad day and he, he's not going to let you through. You know. It's so. going to be definitely be interesting, but nonetheless, 56 years and you're keeping it going. So that's a huge hats off to you. Yeah, and um, I, I do know one thing. You know, um, if uh, if I hadn't purchased it this year. You know, the Olympia would have been canceled four months ago. Yeah, you know? right. And uh, it doesn't matter what happens. We're going through with the show. So, yeah. I'll cheers to that, baby. Cheers. <laughs>